to submit or not submit, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna give you guys four tips for what to consider as you make this decision on a school by school basis. My name is Brooke. I've been coaching people through this college admissions process, especially to really competitive universities for the last decade and a half. So I'm going to share some of my expertise with you today. I'm going to talk about five different factors that you might want to take into consideration as you make this decision. If you want to read the points I'm going to make instead of watch, there's a blog that goes with this video. The link to the exact blog will be in the description below. The first tip that I have for you guys, if you're trying to figure out whether or not to go test optional, is I want you to get the right data. I was working with a student who was applying to the University of Miami in Florida, and the University of Miami had this data on its website that seemed super duper high. Well, guess what? The 25th to 75th percentile of SAT scores it was publishing was for admitted students, not enrolled students, and there's a big difference. And the University of Miami, because it's not a top 10 or a top 20 school may fall into the category of backup school for a lot of students who might be gunning for Ivies or top 20 colleges. And as a result, that means that the University of Miami is admitting a lot of people who may not end up actually going there. That means that your test score could still mean something to the University of Miami, even if you're not in that conglomerate of students who is applying but not going there. My next tip is sometimes you might wanna play the game according to whether this school is letting in a lot of students with no tests, i.e. they really don't care if you hide it, or whether this school is only really letting in people with test scores. Not all schools are as quote unquote test optional as others. Some schools care a lot more about your test score. So you can look at the sort of best bets end of that list. And if they're best bets for test optional, you should lean toward not submitting. But if they are worst bets for test optional, even if your score is below that line, you should consider submitting depending on your context. The third tip that I wanna give you is to consider your context. Context matters a lot, okay? If you go to one of the best high schools in America and your test score is like a 1400 on the SAT and you're ranked in the top like 1% of your class at Exeter or whatever amazing pomp and circumstance high school you attend, guess what? Princeton, Stanford, they're not gonna be worried about you being able to make it academically because they know the rigor at your high school and they know if you're pulling off like valedictorian status there, you're gonna be fine even without a test score. So in these cases, when you have some context, when you're first generation, when you're from an underrepresented group, when you go to a high school that is a craptastic high school and you go on grade schools and it's a three or a two and it's not a 10 or a nine, your test score is going to mean a lot more. Also, if you're an international student, if you're homeschooled, if you're in one of these kind of categories, having a test score can help me know, oh, you can survive. You're gonna be able to have the academic chops to make it at this particular college or university. My fourth point is look at what the schools are saying, okay? Know that schools are out for themselves and they're like, oh yeah, we're test optional. Why? Because they wanna solicit as many applications as possible into their pool. They wanna have a really low admit rate so they become super competitive and rise up the rankings. They're not trying to help you guys, they're trying to help themselves, okay? At the same time, there are some colleges and universities that straight talk will tell you we really want your test score. Purdue, Yale, for example. Those are basically not test optional. They are like, we want your test score. If you don't submit it at Yale, because you're like, oh, I have a 1400, it's not high enough. But a 1400 is a lot better than a 1200. And if you don't submit a score, guess what? They probably are gonna assume you have a 1200. And one last really quick tip is if you are looking at applying test optional, the other research that you can go to potentially is your high school counselor. Your high school counselor is going to have data on your particular high school, potentially through Naviance, that can tell you exactly how many students got into which schools and what their SAT or AC scores were and they may even have test optional data specific to your high school. And the last thing that I'm going to say is go and check out these charts that we have for you guys on our blog. We're going to show you percentile wise what historical data looked like, what did it look like before we went test optional because that's also a good gauge of what academically prepared is for these colleges. In addition to what are the score ranges that we're seeing from the first cohort that was totally test optional, right? You can compare kind of those data points. You can see a little bit more into the gray area. And so I definitely recommend that you check out those charts that we're gonna have on the blog. So go out there, see what you can accomplish and know that wherever you land, you are the most important ingredient in your success. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.